welcome to episode 183 of the Postal Hub podcast. I'm Ian Kerr. My special guest is Katalin Mafte, founder and CEO of C Solution. We discuss C Solution's innovative approach to parcel lockers, including pickup in store and teleportation. More on that later. We also cover the prime locations for lockers and residential parcel lockers. So coming up in just a moment, Katalin Mafde, founder and CEO of C Solution. Joining me on the line is Katalin Mafde. Katalin is founder and CEO of C Solution, a well, it's an interesting company that you've got over there in Romania. Kathleen, maybe I should actually let you do the talking here. Tell us what C Solution is and what you've got happening in delivery in particular. My company, it's e commerce services provider. We offer since 2001 uh, payment services for our Romanian online market. And uh, since um, 2015, we offer parcel network. And so what was it that got you thinking about parcels? Because if you started off doing payments, what was it that happening or not happening in Romania that got you thinking about parcels? Our merchants, they have a lot of issues with door-to-door delivery. And we notice in transactions that even if they grow from one year to another, they have a lot of refunds also. And we decide to talk with the merchants and see what's the reason for the refunds. And we found out that 20% of the deliveries are in question if they are delivered or not uh, using door-to-door delivery method. And because of this, I start to look uh, on the EU market and the international market and see what other companies are doing regarding these problems with door-to-door delivery. And this is how I found out about click and collect and parcel networks. And uh, of course, I go, I went and talked with all the companies here in Romania about click and collect and uh, the parcel network. And it, it turns out that it's it is uh, very very expensive for them to start building this um, this network. Let's talk about the actual e-commerce. Uh, sector in Romania because it's it's a market that we don't hear a lot about. Uh, what kind of growth are you seeing in e-commerce in Romania? I mean, is it growing mainly domestically? Are people buying from domestic merchants? Are uh, people buying cross border and getting their parcels shipped into Romania? What 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 are some of the main trends that you're seeing? We have a couple of big players in uh, in the country, and we have. Uh, also, a lot of uh, people that are starting a niche business. Give you an example. If someone is good at uh, fixing cars or car parts, uh, they can start a business selling spare car uh, products. So they, they start to open uh, small businesses and uh, using marketplace. After one or two years, they try, they try to move for marketplace into their own business and offer better services to clients. The Romanian market, uh, e-commerce market now, it's um, it's growing. And we notice that because more and more merchants are coming from offline to online. So you're seeing this um, the growth of the small businesses bringing their own business online. If they've got a bricks and mortar business, they're bringing the the bricks and mortar business online. It might be starting off in a marketplace. When you say a marketplace, is a company like eBay active in Romania or is there a local equivalent? We have uh, local companies that offer um, stores in a marketplace or you can do stores in a software as a service platform. So apart from this domestic growth, are you seeing cross-border growth as well? Are people ordering from um, overseas platforms, whether it's an Amazon uh, over, um, in another market or something like that? What, what are you seeing there? Yes, it is very high demand for brick platforms, international brick platforms, starting from Alibaba or AliExpress and, uh, of course, uh, ending up with Amazon, Germany, Italy, 
UK, and even uh, US. Let's now look at delivery in Romania. You mentioned before that one of the drivers for you or your company to get into delivery was the number of refunds, and the refunds was, was were being delivered by failures in delivery, whether it's quality yes. of service or just the parcel not arriving or what the, whatever the case might be. So you've you've got a you've developed an interesting parcel locker solution. I think we really should talk about this. Tell us a bit about this parcel locker solution that you've developed and what makes it different from a lot of the other offerings that we see in in other parts of Europe and in other parts of the world. Okay, first of all, it's a parcel network developed I, I would say organic and based on the demand of the customers. We look at on the map and we notice that a lot of and where where we have most of the problems with door to door deliveries, and we focus on that cities to develop the 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 network and to offer people the proximity they would use. So we 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 decide to go in commercial center. Uh, we decide to go into office buildings. We decide to go even in um, apartment buildings. So you were the first company in Romania to offer an out-of-home delivery option, is that right? Yes, yes. And so therefore, you, being first mover, you've created the interest in this out-of-home delivery. You were just saying, though, you started off with inside lockers, though. Where did you go from there? We noticed that m- most of the company in, in uh, EU and also um, I, I think EU is it's the most um, uh, most interesting part that we, we, we are uh, looking at, uh, they have outside lockers, but our our uh, merchants that using our services, they deliver products uh, like baby foods, OTC drugs, uh, pharmacy, plafar, uh, products that need temperature control. And we understand that uh, having a locker outside in dust, uh, rain, sun, uh, snow and so on, we will not be ever be able to control temperature like we have inside commercial centers or office buildings. And this is the, the third part that we, we managed to develop, or container. So we start to think, okay, because our network now offer a good experience and we monitor temperature all the time for every locker, Every five minutes, we go to the locker and question, okay, how is your temperature going? We think, okay, let's start having 24-hour, 24-7 service. But how can you offer an inside experience and temperature control and have it outside for 24-7 access? And this, the answer was the, the container. So... Let's say uh, about one year ago, we start building a special container and we start looking at a neighborhood and we set it up like uh, seven months ago in in Brasov. It's a city, Brasov, in, in uh, Romania, in the middle of, the, of Romania. And we set up the container in a neighborhood in the parking of this commercial center. And we build everything to be able to have access, control access. So we don't have unauthorized access in the container. We install in the front of the container a keyboard where people type a code to enter the container. Inside the container, we have... um, big glass so we have uh, natural light inside so we don't get claustrophobic we have air condition so we we, we can uh, have the temperature around 20 degrees doesn't matter what is the temperature outside even if it's raining or whatever monitoring the container and the uh, and the uh, appreciation that uh, the container is gaining in brashov we notice that we use a lot of power to have uh, all, all the container running. And we decide to set up on the top of the container a green roof. 
with local herbs. And after uh, setting up this special roof, our expenses, monthly monthly expenses to have the temperature uh, regulated in the in the container drop, and now it's is the best experience we can offer to our uh, customers. You can imagine that even in Brasov, we used to have four locations. Inside the biggest malls and commercial center in Brasov. Brasov, you, you can think as a city with uh, near to 400,000 people living over there. And we had four locations. And the container was the, the fifth location. After the first month running the container, all the results, everything uh, was over all, all, all four locations. So the experience and um, that we provide using the container was the most appreciated uh, by the people of the shop. So can I just clarify that a little bit? Do you mean that the, the usage rate was very high and that the parcel lockers were always full? Is that what you're saying? Yes. So yes. you added an extra locker and immediately, more, more or less, immediately it was full. And just a question about how the parcels are delivered into the lockers. Is that part of your own delivery network or can other couriers deliver into those parcel lockers? How does that work? Uh, our network, it's open network. It is based on an API. We offer uh, other couriers the option to go and deliver into our our um, our lockers. Uh, also, we have our own merchants going and deliver the, the parcels into the lockers. So any company, like courier company or merchants own uh, delivery uh, service, can deliver in our network and control. And being in a container, does that mean that you can move? the parcel lockers if, if necessary, or are they more or less permanent installations? Uh, the container, it is good because, let me give you an example, first, f- first uh, installation, uh, we did around uh, two modules. So one was the console with the touch screen where people go and input and uh, couriers uh, drop off the parcels. And after... Um, Two months, we, we went there and we add more modules. And the container gave me the possibility to add more containers and give the customers the more more sales um, to deliver and drop off and also have the same experience. So another key out-of-home delivery option these days is click and collect be it pick up in store or however it might work. What have you been doing with regard to click and collect in Romania? Uh, because we start with our merchants from the payment network, we ask them to install the lockers in the stores, also in the pharmacy, and start offering customers the click and collect experience for the pick up in store mode. Um, uh, model, but by the um, give an example, Decathlon appreciated the idea because uh, the pickup in store uh, model, where they use operators, it's costing time and man hour for employees to give parcels to 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 give the orders to the customers. So they think about okay, if we install automatic parcel machines, then we're going to give customers a better experience, a digital experience, and we're going to have our operators free to do other jobs, other tasks. So this model, it's expanding now in our network of merchants, and they start to asking for more and more lockers to be installed in the in the locations, in the, in the store or in the pharmacy to offer pickup in store. So they're finding it's more efficient to have a parcel locker instead of somebody handing out the parcels manually. Yes, and the customers appreciate that because you they don't pay for the shipping because they go in the store 
they enter the pickup code and they pick up the order and uh, they don't pay for the shipping and that is something that of course at some for some orders it it may count so if the shipping cost might be very high so for the customer they think well it's easier for me to to go to pick it up myself that's the yes. thinking right yes i'm sure i'm sure well, there's something else that you offer though, which is this. You, I think you call it the teleportation service. So what does what does that mean? I'm, it's it's not that we, you're being beamed up to the USS Enterprise on Star Trek. Well, what's what's this? <laughs> yes. what's, what's the teleportation service all about? Okay, teleportation service started when one of our merchants that sell baby products. It's called Bebete. They wanted to do an offer for the customers and have it delivered instantly. We think about, okay, why don't you create the orders? We deliver all the orders in our lockers in hundreds of cells, and then you start a campaign. And they decide to go and do that with a um, bundle of products uh, this summer uh, for sunscreen products. And we they start advertising on Facebook and on the website page. Okay, you, you have this product, this bundle of products. And if you buy this, you have instant access to pick it up from entire network. Almost 100 lockers. You, you have the, the freedom to go and pick it up. And in the first hours of the campaigns, we had so many orders that at some locations we had to send another courier to refill the locker and this was a very good experience for the customers and also for the um, for the merchant so the idea is that the the products are preloaded into the lockers so somebody could be standing next to the locker yes exactly buy, buy with their mobile phone and immediately collect it instead of they don't even have to go into the store or anything like that. They could be just standing next to a locker, and as long as the locker has <laughs> the the product inside, it's a, it's an instant yes. fulfillment. So, yes. but did you say it was so popular that you had to refill? So yes, we had we had lockers where the, the people actually uh, give an example. The lockers, the one that are in the office buildings empty like in a couple of hours people buy from from the locals like uh, we first went and put there like three or four orders they in the first uh, couple of hours they they bought and we send the couriers to refill with another five and so on so they refill during the the um, the promotion couple, like like three or four times uh, the entire network because the product was the uh, seasonal, so the people actually need because it was in, in, in the middle of the summer, and the product was directly addressing, and people didn't, the customers didn't pay the, for the shipping. Uh, they had a good price on on the bundle, and they had access, instant access for the product. So it's a mix of advantages that you give to the customers. Well, that's why I was going to ask you. Is it's not like you could have, say, a, a laptop case in every parcel locker, hoping that someone's going to buy one instantly. It's a, it was a, re- a seasonal promotion, like you said. Um, you see this as being something that can be you know, with, with different products or work with different products and with different kinds of promotions, yes? Uh, yes, but uh, since then, uh, give an example now, we have, n- now we are starting the, the fifth campaign as teleportation. So the, the, the idea of having teleportation, uh, this promotion for one week for a bundle, was adopted by the merchants, and they start to come and ask for, okay, next month, I like to have 200, lock, uh, 200 um, sales in the lockers and to promote my product. So I guess the, the, the next question is, that means that you you have a capacity thing issue as well so you have to keep on adding lockers which is a good problem to have <laughs> if, if your lockers are so popular so is this part of, is this driving the installation of more locker locations that promotions like this we yeah we, in, here it is always a fight how it's better is better to have 
more lo smaller lockers in more locations and offer better proximity, or it's better to have a bigger locker in uh, a central, uh, let's say, uh, attraction points or a commercial center or something like that. And from from case to case, we understand that in, in some region, people like it more to have it on, on the, let's say, near, near the... the um, the store that they used to go and buy daily products. And in other locations, they are more interested to have it more near to, 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 to the home or more near to, to the office. Well, you've just mentioned this idea of proximity. And I guess there's always one other discussion when it comes to parcel lockers and the location of parcel lockers. And that is the potential to put parcel lockers inside residential buildings, whether it's a single locker or a small bank of lockers. What's your experience there? Is, has there been interest in having parcel lockers inside residential buildings? We start to think that it was something that, let's say, new, new neighbourhoods that are um, uh, developers building in Romania will be interested to have uh, residential lockers uh, inside uh, apartment uh, buildings. And we start to talk with, um, let's say, a lot of uh, developers around the country and the areas we, we are already present and we talk with them and explain them what are the benefits and what, what is the, um, the main idea of the uh, residential locker. And it turns out that if we, if we have a, a dedicated solution for this, even hardware and, and, and software, they, they are not interested at this moment. People are not interested to have a parcel locker right in the, in the building. Or at least developers, they are not interested to, to have a partnership with us uh, offering this. So what's the alternative then? If you can't put the lockers in the residential apartment buildings, is there... Yes, yes, you're right. The alternative for us was to to offer this container solution, to have in the neighborhood an interest point where people can go 24-7 and uh, having this um, digital postal station in container. Parcel lockers in Romania then seem to be very popular, uh, growing in popularity as along with other out-of-home delivery options. And that's I mean, it's mirroring what we've seen in a lot of other markets in Europe and in other parts of the world. Um, Catalan, if people want to find out more about your parcel locker solution, uh, your API or anything like that, where should they go? Uh, we have our uh, company website. It's c-solution.biz. And there they can find all the information uh, about our services that we, can, we, we, we provide. So that's c-solution.biz. I'll put a link on the Postal Hub website as well so you can find it there, c-solution.biz, to find out more about the solutions that they have, whether it's the API, whether it's the parcel locker and all those sorts of solutions. Catalina Mafte, founder and CEO of C Solution. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Anne. That's all for this episode of the Postal Hub podcast. Make sure you don't miss an episode of the podcast. Sign up for the Postal Hub e-newsletter. It's a weekly email update with the latest podcast and any other articles I've written during the week. Go to thepostalhub.com and sign up there. You can also subscribe to the podcast on a variety of platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. If you're on LinkedIn, send me a connection via LinkedIn Love to connect with people, but I do ask that you just include a note when you send that invitation to connect to say that you're a podcast listener, and that way I'll accept your invitation to connect straight away. And if you want to contact me about anything at all, my email address is ian at thepostalhub.com. I'm Ian Kerr. Thanks for listening in, and I look forward to your company next time on the Postal Hub podcast.